Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Christina. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my seventh grade homeschool plans and curriculum picks for my seventh grader for next year. I can't believe that he is going to be in seventh grade. It's insane. He is my second oldest. So if you're new around here, I have five kids, ages three, four, seven, 11, almost 12 and 15. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you all about my homeschool plans for my upcoming seventh grader for the 2023-2024 school year. So my seventh grader is doing lots of family style learning with the rest of the family. If you caught my family curriculum picks video or even my 11th grade curriculum picks video, you know, or if you've just been around for a while, you know that we do a ton of family style learning. That is really our flow around here. As much as we can do together, we do. So what I'm probably going to do, especially for those of you that this would be repetitive, is I am going to save what we're doing as a family for the end. And then I'll start with what we're doing independently so that if you don't want to hear all that repeated again, you don't have to. Um, but I may have a couple things added in that I didn't talk about before. So you may want to stick around either way. So first thing that I will talk to you about are his independent subjects like language arts and math, because right now those are his main independent subjects. That is true for all three of my older kids. My 11th grader will have a little bit more independent work to do. Um, you can go back and watch that video if you are interested in what that looks like for him. Um, but language arts and math are their main subjects that they're doing independently. We do our science together. We do our history together. We do art. We do Bible. We do all of those things as a family. And then I have some things that they'll do either independently or that I'll add on whether they're younger or older or what, whether they need something different for their age to access the information, to dig deeper if necessary, and things like that. So I'm a little hesitant to share just for the simple fact that some of us, even homeschoolers, myself included, have to fight against the school mentality of how we approach not only education, but also utilizing curriculum. So I've shared quite a few different times that I would consider us, if I had to label us, which I don't even like to do, eclectic because we are heavily influenced by Charlotte Mason, a Charlotte Mason style, and we are heavily influenced by unschooling. So we are not strict Charlotte Mason, and we are not unschoolers either because I do prepare a feast, so to speak, for my children. And I do, I guess, assign them things. So that would kind of like disqualify, disqualify me for um, unschooling. But I also allow for a lot of time for child-led um, learning and just interests. I'm not gonna get into all of the pedagogy stuff today, but I just wanna preface it with, we do not do traditional style schooling, even for homeschooling in our homeschool. You will see us utilize curriculum, but we oftentimes don't utilize it in the way that it was necessarily planned out or designed to be utilized. So that is a lot of explanation before I jump into where he sort of left off with his main two independent, independent curriculums as a sixth grader. So first of all, I have to tell you the child is brilliant. He is an artist. He's an athlete, he's absolutely handsome, he's kind, he's funny, he's amazing, okay? And none of that is really relevant for curriculum, but as he's finishing up his sixth grade year, you guys, he is on Math 5, so he's still working on Math 5, and he's still working on Language Arts Level 5. Now, this is not because he was behind in either of those things. So I also have a lot to debate about what it means to be behind and what it means to be at grade level and all of those things down to the very fact that the only way that we got grade levels is because during the one room schoolhouse model, they had like your reading primer and they would be leveled. Like the first book was number one and then the second one was number two. And so 
as you progressed and I guess mastered the first one, the teacher moved you on to the next one. There were no grade levels. You were all taught in the same one room schoolhouse. And when you were done with that particular book, you were given the next one. And so as schools got bigger and more kids and more teachers and the need to make things more standardized and uniform, they had grade levels. Meaning whether or not you excelled more in reading and maybe would have moved through the reading books quicker or math and moved through the math books quicker or whether you had more of a science mind or an an understanding and interest in history, those things mattered less and less. And it was more about making things uniform and manageable. So all of that to say, I have different reasons for why he was in level five language arts and reasons why he was in level five math. So I'll explain those in case you missed it because I haven't talked a ton about it. Now, at the beginning of last school year, I was going to start him with math level six from the good and the beautiful. He started the first couple of lessons and was like, mom, I don't know what's happening here. Like, I don't understand this. I'm not ready for this. I think I missed things. Well, you have a couple things at play here. So during the worldwide pandemic is when we started homeschooling. And that's like one thing, I know it's a sensitive topic and I'm sorry if you've been negatively impacted by it in any way. That is one thing that I am super thankful for is like, I could not imagine if we had not started homeschooling. What are like, I just can't even imagine. And so, so many children had learning loss on catastrophic levels from that happening for a variety of reasons that I'm not gonna get into in this video. So he was pulled home, we did math, everything was fine. We had part of a school year, if you guys remember, if you've been following our journey, where I brought everyone to a small private Christian school in our community and my husband and I taught there and we were thinking that that was the direction that we were going to go in until one by one, we pulled each of our children out and ourselves and, and came to full-time homeschooling and me no longer working outside the home. His math suffered tremendously during that time for reasons I won't get into, but not because of his inability to learn math or his not able to understand it or anything like that. We'll leave it at that. So what I decided to do was to get the fifth, the level five math. And I said to him, why don't we go through starting at the back and when things start to make sense, that's where we'll pick up. And what we found is that there were a lot of concepts, even in the beginning of the book that he wasn't solid in. And so instead of pushing him ahead and worrying about him being on grade level, I was like, you know what? Why don't we start at the very beginning? We'll start at the very beginning. Some things will be a good review. If things are painfully obvious, like you know them and it is a waste of your time, then I am going to trust you and you're gonna skip it. And then for those things that are brand new, we're making sure that you're not missing them and that you have a solid foundation because we are going through lesson by lesson. We are still doing this. We do not do math five days a week. Most weeks we do not do math four days a week, if I'm just honest. Realistically, during the spring, we've probably been doing it twice a week. Like, I'm just keeping it real, you guys. We've been very unschooly lately, okay? So, I did not feel a rush for him to finish this up um, at a certain time. One of the reasons being that we do school throughout the summer. It looks a little different, but we do still school. He will st still do math at least once a week. And so whenever he finishes this, I don't know when that will be, you guys. Whenever he finishes, we already have math level six. So yes, he very well may go into Grade seven, finishing up level five math. I cannot tell you how many kids in the public and private school system are still not at grade level. I can tell you that Jackson writes better than many high schoolers that came to me in 10th grade. So breaking free of those mindsets is really helpful in situations like these. So hopefully this is helpful and encouraging to some of you. 
Math is not a place where you want to have a lot of holes because it will get harder and harder to understand. I'm horrible at math. So I was like, you know what? Let's just go back. We'll take our time. We're not worried about it. Okay. And he'll start level six whenever he's done with level five, just like in the days of old, not because the school year is starting and that's the level we're supposed to start. But when he finishes this and he's ready for the next one, that's when we'll go on to the next one. Also, another reason why I wasn't super rushed is because he loves the good and the beautiful math. He loves having a physical textbook and he loves having the video lessons. And that is what the good and the beautiful provides. He's also a very visual person because he's an artist and this isn't boring to look at. Okay. So these things mattered for us. Um, they didn't have level seven yet. They still don't, but I just saw a video release from the good and the beautiful that in early 2024, they are releasing math level seven. So by the time he's ready for level seven, whether it's next year, because he hits a stride and flies through that level six, or whether he doesn't start it until the following year or in the summer or whenever he finishes level six, we will use level seven from the good and the beautiful. So I don't see that changing. I'm always open to change if we need to, but there you have it. He will finish level five, he'll move on to level six, and then he'll move on to level seven. So you know his math plan for quite a while now. And they also said a year from then, they'll be releasing level eight, which will be pre-algebra. So ideally, I wouldn't really want him to finish level seven math until that releases anyway, because I would love to keep him in the same math if it's working. Okay, so that's math. Now language arts, I had different reasons. I gotta tell you something. I, if, in case you don't know, I taught English in a public high school, 10th grade. And I've taught summer school, 7th, 9th, and 10th grade. I taught middle school ELA in a small private Christian school, grades five through eight. So English is my area of expertise. The good and the beautiful language arts is solid in terms of language arts. This is like one and done for us. We don't have a separate writing, separate spelling, separate grammar. That will drive me crazy. It's all in here, literature, all of it. Now, because of his background in education, he did not really have much grammar other than your basics, like nouns, verbs, like parts of speech, right? He's naturally a good writer, which is helpful, but the mechanics and the grammar were suffering a little bit. And so I thought, why not try level five? Because if I'm completely honest, level five had this watercolor element to it. It has a whole watercolor course that is woven into the curriculum and he's my artist. And I thought, you know what, why not? Like if, if I look through the sample, I mean, you can download the whole thing for free online if you wanna print. I did not wanna print all this out. If it's still, he's still learning. If he hasn't mastered all of these things, why am I worried about him moving on to level six? Because he's in sixth grade. So this has been great, but again, we have not been doing this every day. Um, he is about halfway through. So once again, whenever he is done with this, I'm trying to figure out exactly where he is. Okay, whenever he is done with this, we will likely move on to level six. I am not saying 100% like I am with the math because I have a couple thoughts about language arts that I'm going back and forth about. So... I'll probably talk about that more in the future, about whether or not like we need to overlap so much, depending on how much. So I'll just say it now. One of the reasons is, depending on how much we do Gather Round next year, Gather Round is a unit study curriculum, if you're unfamiliar with it, that is family style, that encompasses all subjects other than math. We didn't do Gather Round this year at all, so I needed a language arts curriculum. Next year, I don't know if I'm going to feel the need for a language arts curriculum. So it's possible that I may not move him right on to level six. So I will keep you posted on that because although some people use gather round like mixed in with other core subjects, and I have done that as well, and I'm not against it, there are quite a few gather round units that I wanna to get to next year 
And so I don't want to overload them with more work and more like overlapping than necessary. So I will keep you posted on that. We may just take our time moving through this slowly. If, you know, I'm pretty sure he will still be starting the school year with this next year. And this might carry him through for the days that I want him to do some independent language arts. There is independent work in all of those different subjects at their level with Gather Round, but we'll see how it goes because we probably won't do Gather Round every single day. So I like to have some things to mix it up. So he is still in the level five course book and may or may not move on to level six. So I will keep you posted. So this is, let me know if this is your most non-traditional curriculum picks video. Um, but this is just what we're doing. This is what we're really doing. So here we are. Now, um, a couple other things that are like either somewhat independent or not fully family style. And I forgot to mention this in my 11th grade picks video. Um, so I will say I forgot to mention our Christian Heroes Then and Now series. Now, this is the one we're reading right now. So this is not the actual one we'll be reading next year. But we are still working through many Christian Heroes biographies that we have. And we are still using the To Every Nation curriculum from Not Consume Ministries. I will link this down below because I have more to share from them um, that my seventh grader will be using next year. So... Um, these are kind of just like little units of a few pages about the location where this person was a ministry, was a missionary, about them and their background, and then also scriptures and character traits that go along with them. So we really like this. We do a couple of these a year. There are 12 in here, and there's even a second edition. Um, so we will continue to do these throughout next school year. I do those just with my oldest two boys. They are a little bit too intense. Their stories are real and raw and it's a bit much for my younger kids. So I don't do it with them. Um, something that I did not have in yet when I did my 11th grade curriculum picks video was this economics for everybody curriculum, applying biblical principles to work wealth in the world. Now economics is something that we are required to cover in New York state in the high school level. And so I chose one that I liked that is not a year long and maybe not even a half a semester, but it is 12 lessons and it is by Dr. R.C. Sproul Jr. And it is economics from a biblical worldview. It is a DVD and then there is a study guide. I did not know this came with the study guide. So be informed if you order this on Amazon, I'll link it down below. So I ordered the study guide separate, but then I was like, you know what? Maybe I should just have my seventh grader do it with him. So I'm going to try it out. I'm going to try having my seventh grader do it with him. I like when we can do things family style. And I like when like two of my kids can pair together on something or even three. And then I like them to have independent work too. So I am going to try out having my seventh grader jump in on this with my 11th grader. I think it'd be kind of cool. So like these are two things that my seventh grader and 11th grader do together. Um, I do, so we alternate where I do one with them as a read aloud with just my older two boys. And then the next one they read independently and they'll either read the same one or they'll choose a separate one. Last time they read the same one, they did Lily and Trash, or they both read that, so they took turns with it. Um, and this time we're doing Mary Slessor together and we'll probably follow that same pattern next year. Now, other things from Not Consumed, um, this will kind of cover part of our Bible curriculum. And I sh did share this briefly in my 11th grade curriculum picks video. And that is My Brother's Keeper, A Biblical Study on Loving Your Siblings. Now, there is a book for each of my kids. All of them will have one, even my three-year-old. Um, she'll probably just scribble in it, and that's totally fine. But these come with, like, the scripture, memory cards. They come with a bookmark. And they come with stickers. And then for my seventh graders level, this is what their book looks like. So the whole family has the lesson like on their own that they dig into. So it's not like you teach it and then they do independent work. Everybody does like this personal Bible study and then you come together to discuss it, which is kind of cool because then they have things to say and things to contribute and things to pull from to discuss together. So this is um, his level. And there are 20 lessons 
and we likely won't do this every day, probably a couple times a week, so it'll last us a bit longer because we also have other Bible stuff that we're going to be doing. But this is one that I'm really excited about. Um, we've done them before. Again, I will link Not Consumed Ministries down below. They have so many good ones. There's one on obedience I'd really love to get to this year too. I'm not sure if I will, but you will see. Um, it also, you have the option to buy these magnets for the fridge or anything else that's magnetized. This is a sibling conflict management flow chart. So like this is what you did. Here's a scripture and a prayer and an action that you can take to think about it, examine your heart, make it right, forgive, and trust God with the outcome. And then this one is if someone does something to you, what you, what you can do. So really excited to use this with all of my kids, um, teaching them how to restore relationships, conflict management, repentance, like it's just such good stuff. And then I didn't get this for everyone, but I did get this for my seventh grader because I noticed as he's naturally going through the changes in life and his body's changing and his face is changing and his voice is changing and all these different things, I have heard him say some negative things about himself. And I saw this journal that's called My God Says. And this is all about like what God says about us versus the lies that we believe about ourselves. And so I got him this journal to go through and I'm really excited for him to get an opportunity to dig into what God says about him and to see how it changes um, his attitude and his perspective about himself. So that is the Bible curriculum that he will be using next school year. Next up, I just have a couple other things before I just give you a quick run through of the other unit studies we'll be doing as a family in case you missed that video. Um, this also was not in when I did my 11th graders curriculum picks, but one of our things that we are focusing on next year, which we also focused on this year, so it's really a continuation, is apologetics. So understanding apologetics, how to defend our faith, how to um, stand up with truth to the lies about evolution and things like that. So this is the Answers Book 1, over 25 questions on creation, evolution, and the Bible. Um, there are a bunch of these, so if we finish this and we like it, we'll continue on with these. But these are mostly for my 7th and 11th grader. Again, this is something we'll do together, and um, I'm really excited about it. This comes highly recommended. I know a lot of homeschool moms use these. Let me know if you've used this. So I'm excited to use that as well. That wasn't in, so I figured I would show you that. Um, I also shared that for history next year, we are going to be leaning heavily on Gather Round. Um, if you're unfamiliar, like I said, with Gather Round Homeschool, it is a unit study family style approach to homeschooling. You could just use Gather Round as your spine for the whole year for your main curriculum and then just add math. We're not doing that, but I think it is a great choice if it works for your family. Um, we are doing ancient history. We are starting with ancient history next year. That is our focus. I did not want to study it for the whole year, but it is something that we need to cover. And so we're going to do ancient history for sure. We will likely move on to Vikings and then Middle Ages after that. So three history unit studies for next year. I really don't see us doing more than that. You can do them in a month. They're 20 lessons each, but I know how we roll and we will likely not get to more than three history unit studies because we also want to do, which is obviously not history, but here's another family style unit study we're doing, will be intro to psychology. We're focusing heavily next year. Um, we've already started doing this, but on wellness, like wellness as a whole, like physical wellness, natural medicine, holistic remedies, things like that, nutrition, um, spiritual health, obviously. And also we're going to be focusing on mental health from a biblical worldview. So I'm super excited about that. So we may start with intro to psychology because of the fact that we're still in the middle of our current history cycle, which is the Playful Pioneers from the Peaceful Press. Now, this is a literature and project-based curriculum for elementary students. I use it with all of my kids and I just supplement for the older ones if I feel it's necessary. I absolutely love it. Um, I've talked about it so much before that I'm not gonna talk about it much now, but I will link the Peaceful Press down below. 
They also have an ancient history curriculum called The Precious People that I was considering, but I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna go with it just because I feel like it'll be nice to switch things up and like go back to gather round. Um, but who knows, maybe in the future, years down the line, when I need to cycle back through ancient history, I might go for it. So I will keep you posted, but I'm pretty positive with my choices at this point. Always subject to change, as I always say. So whenever we finish this is when we'll start ancient history. We're not going to start it until this is done because um, I don't feel the need to double up on history. But we may do like our intro to psychology or something like that um, while we wait for that to happen. What I wanted to share with you was this book, The Joan of Arc, um, The Story of Joan of Arc. And this is a very in-depth picture book, but a great, like, a great, great, great way to include literature because I do love a literature-based approach, which is why I like The Playful Pioneers. And Gather Round isn't necessarily a literature-based approach. They do have amazing optional and recommended book lists that I will pull from, but I do have a couple books already. I shared the bronze bow in my 11th graders curriculum pick. So this is one that we'll do. And then I also have, like I said, this book um, about Joan of Arc. And we will have a bunch more books coming in in the next couple of weeks from The Good and the Beautiful. So I'm gonna try um, to do a video um, a book haul video from them because I got a bunch of books from them some of which will be like independent reads and or read alouds for going along with our history so some like historical fiction and things like that so I'm super excited about that for my older two boys so that is history bible math language arts economics um, apologetics and our sciences are mostly from the good and the beautiful, but I do wanna mention that we still will do Nature Study Club here and there. If you've been around, you know that I really love Nature Study Club from For the Love of Homeschooling. Again, there are different leveled notebooks so we can still do family style. He would probably be moving up from the Senior Explorer to the Expert Explorer because Expert Explorer is 12 and up. But I still think you could get away with doing Senior Explorer at that age, to be honest. Um, I, I look at these things so fluid, more like, you know, a recommendation. I'm going to show you the science units just briefly because I've shown them before, but just for you visual people like I am, I will go through them really fast in case you haven't seen them. So we will do health in the physical body and there is a grade seven and eight journal that goes along with it. And it also comes with picture books the story of a cold, and 50 amazing facts about bones. So this will be a great next step as we transition into um, more learning about health and wellness. And then there's also this book, which is a level seven book, which is the story of Dr. Daniel Hale Williams. Okay, so we'll be doing health and nutrition, health in the physical body. Health in the physical body. And this is a three through eight. So I will do this with all my kids, even my 11th grader. Next, we will be doing chemistry. And this one was chosen more for my 11th grader than anyone else, even though this is a five through eight unit study. Now, my third grader, I don't know how much of this I'll include her in. This is mostly my older two boys that I'll focus on. But this does come with the grades five through eight um, journals. I do have three of them in case she wants one. I am not bothered at all about having an 11th grader do this, you guys. Like, I'm sure there are things I am going to learn or be reminded by in here. This does have a book pack, book pack too. So the story of Alice Ball, this is a great way to tie in things for the younger ones. The book of elements and Marie Curie. So this is a level eight book. That'll either have them read independently or we will do it as a read aloud. And then lastly, something that we were going to actually do this year and we didn't get to, we are going to do the safety unit by the good and the beautiful. Um, again, this is grades three through eight. I will do it with all of them. Please know that like you just use your discretion. If there's a lesson that's too silly for an 11th grader to sit through and they don't want to sit through it, then they don't have to sit through it. But 
likely there will be something for everyone and he can sit there and like build one of his matchbox cars or whittle something like it's not a big deal um and i do have the journals for these as well and this comes with the turn away game and a mushroom walk which are about um some tough topics so like this one is about pornography like keeping you safe from that and then this is about sexual abuse so tough topics I like the way the good and the beautiful approaches these topics um, but it is good to be aware and then there is this cyber safety questions and answers book so really important stuff really excited about these units let me know if you've done any of these science units so between these three science units natural science learning that we'll just be doing and then nature study club I feel like we have plenty and who knows if we'll even get through all of it so I may later realize that I've forgotten something like his notebooking. We do notebooking. If you've been around, you know that. I don't have that in front of me, but he will do notebooking for different things. Um, we do lots of outings with our wild and free group, and we're gonna continue to go on adventures and field trips and learn that way. And this is just our plan for right now. And if things change, I will update you guys. So hopefully you found this helpful. I know this was a long video for a curriculum picks video, but here we are. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are new here or you have any questions, introduce yourself down below or ask away. Um, if you're not already subscribed, I would love if you subscribe. Next up will be my third graders curriculum picks and then also preschool and kindergarten will be after that. So I hope to see you soon in one of my next videos. And until next time, stay rooted.